Howdy folks, I'm Hank Sheffer, and welcome to another True Life Adventure right here with Marshall Trimble on Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. The vanishing ca uh, case of the vanishing train robbers. Um, this was, um, um, uh, this was in 1887. It was the first train robbery, April the 27th, 1887. The first train robbery in Arizona. The railroad arrived at 1880 to Tucson and by 1881, it had crossed, uh, crossed into New Mexico, but um, uh, they were a little slow to, I guess, the stagecoach business. They were doing a, there were a lot of stagecoach robberies down there because there was a lot of money. Wells Fargo was shipping a lot of money out of there, uh, Tombstone and Bisbee both. So um, anyway, they're, they're, they, they, turned, they turned to uh, train robberies. And uh, this happened at Pantano, which is just a few miles east of uh, Tucson and it's a Pantano station. There's a Pantano wash right in that area, and they, they, they're gonna have their robbery there. Well, they, they, uh, they jump on the train, and, and just for good measure, they fire, fire a few rounds into the uh, boiler of the steam engine, and uh, they, make the, they put the gun on the engineer, make him stop, do the same old routine, separate the engine and express cars, from the, um, from the mail car and the passenger cars. Leave the passengers here and go on down, go on down the road. But they've got another plan in mind here uh, because uh, they, the, horses, the horses, they didn't have their horses. So um, uh, they, they get into the, the okay, we've got to get them into the express car first. <coughs> they, there's a guy named J.E. Smith uh, in, the, in the express, he's an express messenger and he's a quick thinker because as soon as he realizes the train's going to is is being robbed, he takes five thousand dollars out of the safe and he puts it in in the cold, pot-bellied stove, puts the lid back on, and the robbers break in, and um, the safe they open up the safe. He said, "Oh, you know, they should have known something was up when he let them open the safe without any problems." And they found there were just a few bucks in there, nothing much, and so they. They uh, take the money. They're kind of disgusted with the whole thing. The, the robberies turned out to be a flop, but um, now you got to get away. So they kick the engineer off and the fireman. One of the uh, one of the robbers probably, uh, obviously, had been a former railroader. Anyway, they start going down the rat track towards Tucson. Well, sometime during the night, they realize in Tucson there's a missing train, and so they send a search train out. And the uh, train comes along, and there in the middle of nowhere is this engine and express car. And um, so they go a little further down, and they find the engineer and the fireman and the passengers waiting down here towards Pantano. And um, they um, report the robbery and everything. They t go back to Tucson, and, um, and they take the train in, and it, um, they, uh, they can't figure out, though, because they get... Pima Indian trackers out there, and they co they t keep trying to cut a trail. You know, uh, keep circling around and circling around trying to cut a trail. There are no tracks. There's no sign of these train robbers. How did they leave the train? How'd they get off? How'd they get away? They figured that they stopped the train. Had to have stopped the train. Had their horses picketed out there somewhere, and um, and they would have left tracks. And it makes sense, makes perfect sense, but the mystery could not be solved. They could not figure it out. Well, uh, a few months later, uh, the train robbers come again. Same gang, uh, it uh, turns out, and uh, about the same place. This time, this time they 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 open fire on the train, uh, on the engine, and um, uh, they derail it, and. The engineer, the, the, the engineer, they actually shot and shot his mustache off, <laughs> and um, and the train flips, and the engineer falls out. The fireman jumps. The engineer falls out. The train goes over uh, over a, a kind of a gulch there, and um, and the fireman lands in a tree, <laughs> minus his mustache, and um, uh, they they rob the train. They go in the express car. And sure enough, who's there again? Smith, the same messenger. Well, apparently cowboys and outlaws read read paper newspapers too, because when Smith had pulled that 
slick job of putting the money in the pot-bellied stove. It was made in all made papers all over the Southwest. Uh, and what a hero he was for quick thinking and thwarting this uh, train robbery. And um, they recognize him, and he said, the guy, the cowboy, the, the, the outlaw looks at him, and he said, um, he said, uh, Smitty, don't try that stove racket again, okay? <laughs> and he cocked him on the head with his pistol. <laughs> and um, uh, so they uh, they open the safe and they they take they take some money, and uh, that led to a lost treasure story because um, uh, they, uh, I'm jumping ahead, but then I'll come back to the uh, rest of the robbery. But they they uh, there's a train a, a treasure lost treasure story in Colossal Cave, because all of this is right near Colossal Cave, and um, there is supposed to be a missing uh, a, a missing treasury of robbery uh, in there but nobody's ever found it. And uh, it's funny how they got them uh, when they, they, they left the treasure in there, they think, but they, they built a fire to smoke them out. And, um, and when, and when the, uh, uh, the place was just full of smoke, you know, the posse runs in thinking the outlaws are smoke, uh, you know, suffering from smoke damage. And, uh, and nada. They're not there. Mm -hmm. Turns out there's another end of the to uh, thing. They went out the other end and got away. And so uh, uh, did they take the treasure with them? Well, according to the story, the, the treasure stayed there. What happened to that first bunch of train robbers? Same gang. What happened? How did they disappear like that? Nobody could figure it out. Well, they pulled another robbery, this time in uh, right outside El Paso. and. Um, they uh, uh, they fingered them uh, because well, they recognized that one of the guys that was living in a local boarding house, and it was Doc Smart, who was the leader of the gang. And so Doc Smart's um, arrested, and uh, they um, he finally confesses to the whole to how they did it. Um, they rode the engine into Tucson and got off in the yards where there were lots of tracks and they could, you know, nobody could pick up their tracks. And then they put the engine in reverse and backed it back until it ran out of steam. Because remember I said they punctured, the, they prefer, uh, perforated the, the boiler with bullets. And uh, that's why there was no tracks. Uh, the tracks, they left the tracks in Tucson. Doc Smart told them how they did it because they never had solved how that happened. And he told them, and, it, and, it, he to, and then what happened after this first robbery is that um, while the posses were scouring the countryside looking for the robbers out there, uh, Doc, uh, uh, Doc Smart and the boys were living it up in Tucson. And then one of them had a friend who worked for the Southern Pacific and they slipped him on a freight train and took him back to El Paso. I used to tell, I, uh, that, I used to tell that story to kids and, they, and I'd say, but I'd say, now tell me, how did they do it? And these kids would come up with all kinds of things, you know, flying saucers, pick them up, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> but um, that's the Vanishing Train Robbers, the case of the Vanishing Train Robbers. Thank you for watching this episode of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains.